supposed to be nice today. All right. So, um, Derek, my friend, yesterday, I walked you guys through two examples how of sizing feeders and branch circuits for motors based on Article 430. They, these two examples that I'm going to walk you guys through are also motors, except they're special type of motors. Did you guys hear me? Article 440 is for HVAC equipment, especially the chillers, anything that has a compressor in it. So when they tell you, Karen, it's a chiller or it's a rooftop unit, anything that chill to cool the building is a specially designed motor with a compressor that the code treated differently and assigned a different um, different article for it. So you're looking at <laughs> and you do the calculation slightly differently. So Adam, the calculation is, I would say, 80% the same calculation that we're going to do, slightly different though. OK, so let me show you what we have here before we go ahead and start, my friends. We have the same thing. We have a feeder. Can you guys see that, my feeder? Um, I have a feeder with a disconnect and a fuse coming to a gutter, and the gutters are feeding um, combination starter disconnect, actually fuse disconnect, no starter, um, and both of them are feeding an AC unit, a chiller, right, like, like feeding a chiller, an AC unit, right, um, anything that cools the system. Okay, Karen, the chiller number one or AC number one has the following information on the nameplate. Full load amp 70, lock rotor amp 160, uh, voltage 230, uh, 240, and the three phase. If you look at uh, chiller number two or AC number two, 120, 451, lock rotor current, 240, and three phase is the system. Am I making sense, guys? There are two chillers or two AC units or two rooftop units. What's special about them? Why why do we have to mess with them? Because they have some type of a compressor. And when they have a compressor, um, a sealed compressor, guys, the, the code treat them slightly different and assign to them um, Article 440, specially designed. Does that make sense? Specially designed. They are different than air handling unit, for example. Okay. So what do we need to do? We need to do the following, gentlemen. We need to size the brand circuit, size the fuse for the brand circuit, the disconnect for the brand circuit, both of them. We need to size the feeder, number six, number four, the fuse, number five, the disconnect for both units. Can you guys see that? The disconnect for both units. And then number seven, seven A is the, uh, I call seven A guys, this is a equipment ground conductor for unit one, equipment ground conductor seven B for unit two, and 7C equipment ground conductor for the whole system. Any comments, any questions of what we have? Everybody understand what you guys have in front of you? Can you have thumbs up, Chad? Yes, no? Okay. All right. So what we need to do is size these uh, six, seven things. Basically. Now, Adam, you could have uh, 30 chillers, and they will be the same calculation, right? The reason why I picked up two guys, because after two, you add a third one, it just the size starts getting bigger. The calculation would not change. Does that make sense? Why you picked up two? One will be a branch circuit. Two will be a feeder. And after two, nothing will change. The same calculation just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Okay. Before I leave this one, any question, guys, about the uh, graph that you have, the riser? This is called the one-line diagram. Can you guys see the every time we do calculation moving forward, I have a one-line diagram for you? that identify the components. Um, and um, HVAC equipment, typically chillers, typically we have we have a, a disconnect, fuse disconnect with them, guys. What happened to the controller? Anybody ask, where's the controller, Chad? Because remember the one before had a controller here and an overload? But this one, that's for the motor. This one, where's the controller and the overload? For chillers, guys, the rooftop units, the controllers, and the overload tend to be part of the con the manufacturer provided controller. So what the con what the manufacturer has provided, they have a little uh, VFD or controller attached to the equipment, and all what we have to do, Derek, is provide them with a disconnect like this, a fuse disconnect, not, no controller in it, a fuse disconnect for physically mechanically isolated units. That's all. No controller, just so have half of that. Typical. 
Okay. So if you guys remember when we went to Boston Scientific, did you see these VFDs right onto the chillers and there are tons of VFDs on the chillers, right? Right where the chiller is attached to the chiller designed by the manufacturer. That's why as, a, as design engineers don't mess with these. All what we needed to provide them uh, typically is a fuse disconnect. And some, sometimes even they provide the disconnect right at the chiller. So you don't even have to, all that you have to provide for them all this will be provided by the manufacturer. The only thing you need is just a cable, a brain circle. It's all that you need to provide for them. Okay, so let's go ahead and size a few things. Okay, um, I do have the calculation for the first one. The second one, I don't. So, Adam, my friend, um, brand circuits. The first thing we need to size is so-called Mr. Brand circuit. So, let's go to number one. Uh, number one is my brand circuit, my brand circuit. Um, chillers and AC units, guys, like motors, they're continuous load. So what do you do when you size for a continuous load jump? What do you do when you size for a continuous load? You multiply it by 1.25. Now, um, can I bring to your attention one little thing, guys? Do you see a horsepower here? Look at this. Do you see any horsepower for these chillers? No horsepower. They typically don't give them in horsepower. They get them in tons which is converted into KVA, which is converted into full load amp. They use, they use full load amp. They don't have uh, horsepower on them. Typically, no horsepower in these equipment. You guys see any horsepower? There's no horsepower. Okay, so because of this atom, when you do the multiplication, okay, so 1.25, uh, 1.25, um, so I, so Karen does not accuse me of bringing these from my basement, what I do right now is in 440.32. If you guys go to 440.32 section, it tells you, gentlemen, that do it exactly what we're doing. Multiply it by 70. 70 is the full load amp on the name player. And that will get you, gentlemen, um, 88, 88 amps. 88 amps. Okay? 88 amps. Uh, the second, the same thing for this baby, 1.25, multiply this one by its own full load, which is 120, that will get you a healthy 150 amps, 150 amps. Okay, so, um, since we're industrial, building, 99.9% .9 of the three phase, the lugs will be rated for 75 degree column. So we go to 310.15B16, and which column are you going to go to? 75. Even though, Adam, look at the amps are 88, based on the default, you should be on 60, because it's just on 100, 100 less. But because there are three pairs, and the lots we know they're rated for 75, you go 75. So if you guys go to 75, you're going to find yourself three conductors. Why three conductors? Three pairs. Number three, A, W, G, T, H, H, M. T, H, H, M. Would you say you have to be 100? Yeah. 100 or less 60? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. The amps, the logs, guys, are rated for 75. So when you go to 310.15B16, which column are you going to go to for everything that you size for us right now? 75. Why? Because three-phase equipment, 75 rated logs. Otherwise, if, we, if there's not three-phase equipment and we don't know about the logs, you have to default to 60 because it's 100 or less. Okay, John, how about the second one? Three. Then this will be three conductors, number, uh, number one out. A W G T H H M. That's it. Done. Three conductors. Piece of cake. Can I emphasize the word that where you go, you guys, when you go to 15 or 15 P16, you go to 75 degree column. Next, overcurrent protection device. Overcurrent protection device. Now, for overcurrent protection device, um, if you go. To 440.20, did I flip them? Maybe I, is it? Okay, 440.20 doesn't sound. No, that's right. Yeah. If you guys go to 440.22 and 240.6, it will tell you the following, Karen. You have to, if, unless you know the overcaptation device for the motor, overcaptation 
device here. Um, you take 1.75, multiply that baby by 70, and that will get you 123 amps. And if it's not a standard, it doesn't allow you to go up, so you have to go down to 110 amp fuse or circuit breaker. Next, the same thing for this one, guys. 1.75, multiply this by 120. That will get you a healthy 210, 210 amps. You have to go down when you go down, because you can go up to a 200 amp fuse or circuit breaker. Okay. Now, can I get you guys to understand on chillers, carrying on chillers, this number here, I want to put the green on that. And this number, <coughs> these two numbers, guys, will be called, please write it down for you, it's called minimum circuit and piston. MCA, minimum circuit ambicity. So when you go to the name plate, um, Derek, when you go to a name plate of a chiller, you're going to, on the name plate, you're going to find minimum circuit ambicity. So and these two numbers will sit in as so. Do I need to multiply that by any 1.25? No. Did you guys hear me? Uh, for chillers, typically minimum circuit ambicity is right on the name plate. You do not have to do this calculation. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand that. This step most likely will be calculated by um, by the contract by the manufacturer. So Matt, here's the name plate. It says minimum circuit density 150, full load amp 125. So you grab the 150 and you size your conductor. It's already done for you. If it's not done for you, that's how you do it. But remember the minimum circuit density. The second thing I'm gonna I'm gonna emphasize here. Here and is these two numbers here. I'm going to use a different color here. Excuse my mess here. I'm going to take him all the way up. These two numbers is called uh, maximum over current protection device. MOP, maximum over current protection device. MOP. On the name plate of a chiller, when you guys look at the chillers that we looked at fossil scientifically, we were there. If you look at the name plate, they say, hey, maximum over current protection device is 110 for this one and 200 for the other one. What does that mean? You grab that number and you go size your fuse. You grab it and you size a fuse. You don't have to do anything. Can I get you guys to understand that also this number here is calculated by the, the manufacturer? May I have thumbs up that we understand this one so important for chillers, guys? These two numbers will be done by the manufacturer and put on the name plate. Got it? Clear? So you're going to find maximum, and it's called MOPs and MCAs. MOPs and MCAs. You, give the, uh, you grab the MCA number and size the conductor. No calculation done. Grab the MOP number, size the conductor, no calculation done. For your friend, Chad, because the manufacturer did not give it to us, so uh, Derek, it will be right here. You can see it will be right here on the nameplate. You know? But we're not giving it. So in, in, in reality, this will be... Um, minimum circuit ambicity, and right in here will be maximum over current friction, and um, and it will give you for each one of them. What was the minimum circuit ambicity? Just for the heck of it, the the calculation that we did that will be given as 88 amps, and the other one will be 150. Thank you amps, and the maximum over current friction device was 110 amp, and that one will be 200 amp. I'm going to highlight these and highlight them. That's how the name plate will be. Do I need to do any calculation then? No. Okay. I got. I drew. I drove the idea. I hope I drove it. So, but since we don't have them on the name plate, if you don't have them, which 99% of the time you will have them, this is how they do it. Why 1.75 atom? That's because the NEC code book says 1.75. For why did I go? Why did I go down? Because it says go down. It doesn't say go up. All right. I hope I drove this one. Um, disconnect. 
I need a disconnect for this um, for this uh, switch. When we size a disconnect for the any equipment, guys, it's sized based on two things. When you size a disconnect like this, baby, it's sized based on amp wise and horsepower. Okay. So let's go and for amp wise, if you guys go to 440.12, the well 3 12, it will get you the following uh, 1.15 times the full load amp, which is 70. That will get you a healthy, that will get you a healthy 81 amps. And if you guys go to the wall 3 12, um, that will get you the wall 3 12, that will get you 100 amps. 100 amps. Same thing, 1.15 times uh, 120. That will get you, gentlemen, 138 and ladies. Um, and, and then that will refer you to a 200 amp disconnect. Any comments, guys, any questions about the disconnect? Size, the amp size of a disconnect. So that's called the amp size of the disconnect. This is amp. Then there is the horsepower rating. So for every disconnect amp, there are two sizes. Can I get you guys this then? This is the disconnect. We have an amp size for it and a horsepower size. For motors, the horsepower was easy because when it says the motor is 15 horsepower, then it's 15 horsepower. For HVAC equipment, we don't have horsepower. So we really have no idea what the horsepower rating of this equipment is. So we have to do calculation. Okay, horsepower rating. For horsepower rating, guys, you need to do the following. Number one, um, you need to, to go to table 430.250. So take 70 amps. This is my 70 amps. Take this baby to table um, 4, um, 30.250. I think I did I did that one and I'm gonna do the same thing for the other one we do together. 120, take it to table four thirty two fifty. You're looking at it right here, guys. And that will get you a horsepower of fifty horsepower here. And and, and that will get you a thirty horsepower, thirty horsepower here. So what the heck is that? Let's let me show you. If you guys go to these tables right here. So Remember the first, the voltage is 240. You see that there? 240, you go to 240, which is 230. I need a full load amp of 70. I need a full load amp of 70. Where's my full load? Uh, oh no. I need a full load amp of 70. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh, that's why. Da, oh, Chad. There you go. This is for the full load amp. Can you guys see the table? The first one is this table. Here you go. Here is my uh, 240 system. Um, I can't read that one. So if, you, if you're if you looking at a full load amp of 70, there is no 70. There is 68 and 80. So you go to the 80. Can you guys see that? And the 80 will refer you to what size over what size horsepower? 30 horsepower. Karen, does it make sense? 30 horsepower? Okay, then you're gonna to go to the second motor, which is 120. 120, my friends. 120 is gonna refer you to um, 120, which is gonna to go to 130, and that's gonna refer you to this horsepower. So based on the full load amp, guys, we find the horsepower rating. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We know how to do that. Yes, no. So you're given the full load amp. You come under the full load amp. If it's not there, you go to the next one and you decide you find the horsepower. Any comments, guys? Any questions about finding the horsepower rating? Yes, no? Okay. So let's go back then. So that's where we got the, um, the 50, the 50 horsepower and 30. Then the second, the second thing that you need to do, guys, is also horsepower rating, horse power rating, locked rotor current. For, for uh, 
For horsepower rating, guys, you have to size it based on the lock torque current and the full load current and choose the largest. Piece of cake. The lock torque current for this motor is 160. Where did I get this one? 160, guys. That's from the NEC code book. The locked, locked rotor current for this guy is 451 amps. Okay? These two are given on the name plate. If you guys forgotten, they're right here. Do you guys see them? Lock rotor current, lock rotor current. They're given. Okay, based on these two lock rotor current, Adam, and if you go to 430.251B, a different table, you're going to find a 10 horsepower here. 10, oops. You're going to find this one will give you 10 horsepower. And this guy will give you 40 horsepower. Okay? Now, Karen, you have two sizes of horsepower for the same motor. There, can you see the first motor have 10 horsepower based on lock torque current and 30 horsepower based on full load current? Which one would you think you will pick? Anybody? The largest. We're going to be picking the largest. So, what size horsepower this? machine needs 30 and 50 for the second one more time when you size the disconnect guys you size your disconnect based on amps and horsepower for the amps adam there is only one calculation you're looking at it for horsepower there are two calculations one uh, or two two values one based on the full load amp and one based on lock rotor current for each motor and you pick which one the largest you pick the largest okay let's take you to that table guys that we were just talking about here's the table um here's one we have, we need 160 can you guys see this is table 430.251b it says uh maximum motor block total current in amps for three phase design bc and d equipment my voltage is 240 can you guys see my voltage 240 and i'm looking for 160 amps, I don't have 160, I have 127 and 162. You go to 160, and gentlemen, 160 will lead you to this. And then I have, this is for, uh, the first one was 100, 160 amp. You go here, and the second one you need 451. 451, uh, the next one will be 451, 580, and that will lead you to this guy cool that will lead you to this guy that's why you came up with 10 and 40. i want to refer you to the first one guys was a different table based on the full load amp that was based on full load amp of this one but based on 70 the first one was 70 amps and the second one was um, 120 120 amps Okay, for 70 amps, it gets you 30. For 120 amps, it gets you 50. Based on the full load amps, based on the lock torque current, the lock, oops, based on the lock torque current, back, Chad, back. Based on the lock torque current, you came up with 10 and 40. So, long story short, which one are you going to use? The largest horsepower motor. So, gentlemen, can you write yourself when you do it for your friend Chad? I have either 30 or 10. Which one are you going to use? Of course, 30. The worst scenario. I have 50 or 40. Which one are you going to use? Of course, 50. The largest. Any comments? Any questions? Cool. This is a new step. We haven't done that before. All right. So that's a new. We spent some enough time on it. Let's go to these are the new tables, guys. This one table. This is not new. We use that one. All right. Let's go to the feeder. Gentlemen, feeder. So we got through all this uh, mess. Let's go directly to my feeder. Feeder over competition device. Feeder over competition device, Adam, is coming from 440.22B1, 240.6. So what does it say? You take the largest fuse, exactly like motor, plus the full load amp of the others, 240, and, and, the, and then which will give you, oops, I'm sorry, I, um, 70. Light of myself, so it'll give you 270 amp, and then you go down exactly like motor says you go to 250 amp fuse for the system. 
250 amp fuse. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Where did the 200 came from? The largest fuse of the system, guys. If you go to the largest fuse of a system right here, 200 is the largest fuse of a system. Fuse, not disconnect. Fuse, wasn't it? Oh yeah. No, largest fuse. Yeah, yeah. That's a, a cool incident, but you don't have to. Okay. So, gentlemen, that's the feeder, overcome protection device. Number number five is the feeder disconnect. The feeder, this. Connect for feeder. If you want to have a disconnect for the feeder that can disconnect the two cellos at the same time, this is how we're going to size it. The first size is called the amp. Amp. Based on the amp, guys, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take 1.15, multiply it by both the 120 plus the 70. Now, Adam, this disconnect is disconnecting both machines. We haven't done that for motors. It's actually the same thing for motors. Typically not common where the disconnect need to disconnect both machines. You know, the disconnect need to disconnect both machines. You add them up and then you multiply them by 1.15. How do you know that, Chad? If you are a Dowling Thomas, did you guys hear about the guy Dowling Thomas? 440.12 B2 carrot is your uh, your reference because anybody can pull any ideas from their idea you know i think so well you know you can think anything you want but when you sub that's called the direct that's called sub substantiating your thinking referring to the code why the code that's uh, that's a lot the electrical law okay my man okay gentlemen when you do your math uh, when you do the math you're going to end up with uh, 219 anybody can verify 219 amps and if you take it to the wall 3 12, the standard, that will get you a healthy 400 amp. So I'm looking at a healthy 400 amp uh, disconnect for the two machines. For the two machines. Okay, now that's the amp size. I can't emphasize. Uh, when you have a disconnect like this size, you have an amp size for it and a horsepower size. You don't want to take a horsepower size because it's going to have enough energy. If it's not ready to have enough energy, it won't explode in your base. So they want to make sure it's ready to explode both amp and power. Amp is the current, interrupt the current, and, and, and horsepower is the energy. Huge energy when they have it. You know, it's like um, Derek, 200 pound, let me just, pardon me, 200 pound gorilla like Chad running at 20 miles an hour and you were trying to hold, hold him, right? That's a lot of energy. That's what uh, uh what that circuit breaker interrupt that process, right? Okay, the horsepower. That's why we go to the horsepower. For the horsepower, guys, very easy. For the horsepower, you based on the full load current, you do the following: take the 120, add it to the 70. That will get you, guys, gentlemen, 190 amps. Add them up, <clears throat> and take this 190 amps. Oops, let's take this one here. So. Then you take the 190 amps to this table, take it to table 430.251B, 51B right here. I'm sorry, 50, no, 51, not 50 and one chair. Um, take it to, which is right here, they got uh, 251 and a B. And from there, if you guys, we, ju we were just there a second ago. When you go there, you're going to end up with um, uh, 75. 75 horsepower. 75 horsepower. Then you do the same thing for the lock torture current. For the lock torture current, Adam, 160, add it to, to 451. That will get you a healthy 611 amp. Take your 611 amp, take it to table 430.251, not 251, is it? Yeah, 251B. And gentlemen, 
you're going to end up with uh, or the lock throat or current. Yeah, uh, uh, for this one, you're right. For this one is actually, I'm sorry. For this one, you have to go to uh, table 430.250. You're absolutely right. For the bottom one, you go to 251B. Okay, for the bottom one, gentlemen, thank you. I'm, I'm glad one of us is away. So 51, uh, oops, 50 horsepower. 50 horsepower. So this will give you 50 horsepower. 50 horsepower. Okay? So Adam, now you're faced with two horsepower sizes. One will tell you size it based on 75 and one size it based on 50. So can anybody guess which size I'm going to go by? The largest. So the largest size, I'm going to highlight it with blue here. So this is my size. Can you guys write yourself a note that says pick the largest? So Adam, when I buy that motor, that uh, disconnect, I'm going to ask for a 400 amp disconnect rated for 75 horsepower. That's exactly what you tell them. And the voltage 240. You call and say, may you please ship me a 75 horsepower, 400 amp, uh, 243 phase disconnect. Done. <coughs> Not 50. That's how you specify your, your, your equipment. Gentlemen, I think we killed that baby. Shall we move on? Yes, no? I have one more example for you, so hopefully the two examples will, will stick. Okay, so we size the disconnect. Now feeder conductor, the rest is piece of cake. Then. Now we need to size the feeder conductor. Uh, like motors, 1.25, multiply it by the largest, fattest chiller, right? And then add to it the other chiller. If you guys do that, you're going to end up with uh, 220 amps. You take your 220 amps, you're going to take them to table 310.15P16, and you're going to end up with three conductors, number for the feeder, uh, number 4 hot, and uh, A, W, G, T, um, A, W, G, T, H, H, N. Could it be THHW? Yeah, if we're wet location. Done. See how easy that is? Now, there is no difference between chiller and a motor here. Between an exhaust fan that has a horsepower rating and a chiller that has a ton rating. In terms of, see how they're similar, guys, but slightly different, but not a whole lot, though. Still, that's how we size the, you know, the overcome picture. But everything almost we size the same thing, guys. The disconnect, even the disconnect is all size. Slightly, the multiplier is different. The motors, they have a table that you go to for the overcome protection device. For the chillers, you go to that section and it's only 1.73, 1.75. Okay, equipment grounding conductor, 7A, 7B, 7C. I'm gonna remind you what, what are these guys and where they're located. We need to size the equipment ground conductor. Adam, right here. I am pulling a PVC conduit, and I need to size an equipment ground conductor to ground the system here. 1A is going to chiller 1, chiller 2 is B, and chiller C, uh, ch uh, the feeder is C. Everybody understand where they're located? The two branch circuits and the feeder. I just call, I happen to call them A, B, and C. 7A, 7A, B, and 7C. Doesn't have to be this way. You can give them different numbers too. Okay, for machine one, gentlemen, for machine one, you're going to take um, 110 amp, the overcome picture device, take it to table 250.1, 2 and 2, and that will get you one conductor, number 6AWG, THHN, uh, or covered, or bare, or insulated. The second one is 200 amp. These are over current protection devices. These are what these are, guys. Uh, take it to the same table. You're going to end up with one conductor, number 6, A, W, G, T, H, H, N. The sec that's for the second one. 
number six, number six. And the last thing is a feeder. You guys remember that the feeder, all of them, which is 250, 250 amp. Take it to the same table. You're going to end up with one conductor, number four, A, W, G, T, H, H, M. These are the three. Why one? Did I parallel? If you parallel, there will be one in every conduit. Did I parallel here? Do you see any paralleling? No paralleling. Where did I came up with these numbers, guys? Here's the table that we go to, right? I thought we have a table. Oops, I lied to you. I thought we did I delete that table? Adam, did you steal my table? Oh, somebody steal my table. Okay, 250 dot. You guys are familiar with 250.122, right? How to use it, so I don't need to snap shot it. Okay, gentlemen, we sized the whole system. Do you need a few minutes to hit it one more time? Another example. Now, I don't have a calculation for these. I want you guys to do the calculation with me. You need a few minutes, so shall we hit it? Derek, you are the parameter. Let's take uh, five minutes to set up. Five minutes, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go one more time and uh, get that thing. Now, I need your help with this. So, uh, here the same thing. You see that? 440, same questions. The only thing that we have, guys, here, full load amp 120, 100, lock total uh, 500, 400, voltage 208, 208, three phase system. Everybody can see that? So, only difference. We need to size the same thing, guys, the same seven things. Okay, shall we go ahead and start? I need uh, my helpers here. So the first thing we need to do, Adam, are you helping us? Uh, grab your calculator, will you? Please, 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 please. So let's do uh, our brand circuit, the first thing for these. Uh, my brand circuit. Brand circuit. Okay. So for my brand circuit for these babies, uh, I need 1.25 um, 1 times, right? That's what we, we did for the current, the flow current of each one of these. Where am I here, Chad? Um, times 120, and I need 1.25 times also the other one is 100. Do me a favor, will you? Can you can you guys give me a, uh, the answer for these, please? Please. Well, let's start with this one. This one, oops, is a 150. Um, 150 amp. What's the second one? 125. Amp. Okay. Now we need to go size, when we size a barrel circuit, guys, we need to go size the conductor size. So what's the conductor size? Three conductors. Can you guys go to 310.15B16, please? 310.15B16. This one's uh, uh, number one. I need seconds here. Not like I don't trust you, but I need seconds. Can somebody second that? Number one, A, W, G, T, H, H, M. Do you have a second? See, did they tell you that? I, they didn't I say I need seconds here? <laughs> What's going on here? 150 M wire size. Why not? Where did you get that one? Are you kidding me? You guys have a calculator. Should be, you have the calculator handy. So 150, oops, that should get you um, three conductors, number one, odd, A, W, G, T, H, H, N. All right, 120, so the same thing, three conductors, what size? Number one, number one, number one A, W, G, T, H, H, N. Okay, done. Overcome fiction device, gentlemen. <laughs> 1.75 times 120 and 1.75 times 100. That easy, 175 amp here. And 175 amp is a standard. So you go down if it's not standard. That's easy one here. Can you guys give me what this calculation for 120 that one? 210. That's easy. There is no 210. So you're going to go down to what? 200 amp. Okay, am I right? Yeah. 200 amp. 
Disconnect Zelman. Disconnect. See how easy that is. Okay, disconnect amp wise. We need to do the amp first. Amp. So we take 1.15 multiply amp by 120. This is my calculator. 138 amps. The next standard is 200, right? From the volt. Uh, 1.15 again times 100. That's easy. 1150. And guess what? 158 amp. And that will give me what? 200 again. So each one of them is 200 amp. Talk about easy. Now this I need help with. We're going to take the 120. Now horsepower rating. You're going to take full load amp for the first boy which is equal um, 120. Take it to and this full load amp for the second boy which is equal 100 amp. Can you guys go to 430.250 and find me these? Uh, 100. There you go. I thought there you no not this okay under 28 remember now we are under 28 gentlemen uh, i have a hundred uh, okay so here's a, a hundred 40 horsepower and what's the other one hundred and uh, 120 or 125 50. okay so we have 40 and 50 right respectively do I have two seconds? Yeah. All right, 100 and four. Oops, here you go. So I have this is 40 horsepower, and this is 50. Oh, the other way around. This is 40 horsepower, and this is 50 horsepower. Cool? 50 horsepower. Okay, now locked rotor current. Same thing, locked rotor current. Uh, horsepower, horsepower. Okay, locked rotor current for the first boy. What was the first boy? Uh, 500. 500 amp. Locked rotor current for the second boy is 400. Now, do me a favor. Let's do the same math. Go to different terms. Remember, you're under 28. Okay. We are under 28, gentlemen, right here. Is that? Oh, no, this is uh, one more. Okay, so we're under 28 right here, right? And what did I need? I need a 400. Can you guys see 400 is right here? That will give me 25. Am I right? And 500. I can't read that one. 400. Uh, and 500 is going to give you 40. Right? Here's a 500 and here's a 400. So what do I end up with? Um, what do I end up with? I end up with 25 and 40. Can I have a second? 25 and 40. Second. Okay. Yeah, 404, and we're looking at 400. Yeah. 25, 40. All right, gentlemen. 25, 40 it is. 25, 40. So this is 25 horsepower, and this is 40 horsepower. Now, gentlemen, which one are we going to use for to size the system? The largest. Okay, so the, my disconnect will be 200 for both of them. One rated for 40 horsepower, the other one rated for for 50 horsepower. Do we use these? These are just to give a surface. You choose the largest of the two. Karen, good. Derek, make sense. Adam, good. Okay, let's go to the next. You guys are rushing me here. One can't even sip his cup of coffee without being interrupted here. Okay, theater over competition device. I need you guys to remind me what was the largest over competition device that we came up with. Thank you. I have 200. And uh, what's the full load current? The second one? 100. 100. Thank you. 100. That's easy. Now 300. And go down if it's not a standard. Well, guess what? We hit the jackpot here. So 300 done. Disconnect. Uh, no feeder. Number five is uh, is not number five feeder. Number five. 
period over computation device. Number five is disconnect amp side. Disconnect. This is this connect for people. Okay, Adam. The second amp. Amp wise, 1.15 times. Add him up. It was 100. What was the first one? 120. 120 plus 100. Multiply 120. Add him up and multiply by 1.15 and give me a. Give me an answer, will you? Please. Second, 253 amps. Take it to DeWalt, that will refer me to 400, am I right? DeWalt, there is no 200, 400, none. Horsepower, full load, horsepower rating based on, uh, on, on full load amp, 120 plus 100 equal what? 220 amp. Um, and let's do the lock torture as long as we are on it. 500, the lock torture was 500, right? Yeah. Plus 400. That will give me what? 900 amps. Okay, so what's the size base? I take them to, we're going to take this to this table, this one to this table. And I need two people to give me the answer. 220, what would 220 give me? Second. Thank you, 100. 100 horsepower for this. Okay, what would the 900 from the other table give me? Second, two seconds. 60, 60, 60 it is. 60 horsepower. Now, gentlemen, what do you think? Which one am I going to be using? 100, thank you. And here I am thinking you guys are not paying attention and you know it. I might as well just, shall we close shop and go home to the end? If you guys getting it. <laughs> thank you. That doing it together is better than uh... okay so that, see how easy that is on the test Matt because I know there's a lot of confusing here please write yourself a note bring uh, all the calculation here note this is how you do this and that bring it with you to the test no problem by the time we do all this calculation especially the final will be if you're not confused you're not with us I always say it's just there's so many 1.75 and add them and multiply them then don't add them and then write to serve a clear notes all these formulas put them to size the disconnect for the feeder you do the following 1.15 add them up multiply them go to this it would not hurt my feeling questions next feeder conductor for the feeder conductor gentlemen we need to take 1.25 times the largest motor which is 120 right and then add 100 to it. Am I right? Yep. 100 to it. Um, so, how much? 250. 250, thank you. <laughs> thank you. 250 amps. You're going to take your 250 amps, guys. We're going to take it to 310.15B16. We need three conductors. Number 250 KCM. Second. Second, thank you. 250 KCM, THHN. What if we were in a wet location? Make sure you have THHW with it, or THW. See how easy that is? Okay, equipment ground conductor. For motor number one, what was the overcantation device? Overcurrent protection device for motor number one was what? 200. Take it to table, table 250.1, 2 and 2. You need one conductor either size for me. Same thing here. Uh, what's the over condition device for the second one? 175 amp. And for the feeder? Was it 300? Okay. 300. I'm glad one of us is awake here. 300 amp. And okay, so let's say one, each one of them is one. Why one, Derek? Because I did not pair up, right? Okay, what's the first size? Number six. Second. Number six, thank you. Number six, A W G T H H N. The second one. Also number six, number six. And the third one. Second. Number four, A W G and A W G. All of them are T H H N. 
gentlemen. That's about it. You guys got him? Here's your homework. If you guys, if I were you, I will hit it right here on the spot and do it right while it's uh, it's uh, it's in your mind. The same system, Karen. We're gonna size the full load amp is 233, 351. Lock torture current 1010 and 200 amp. Voltage 483 phase. Okay, and you are to size these seven things. That's your homework number six. Please do up, guys. Ten points are the homework. Very easy, ten points. Doesn't hurt. Okay. And that's all what we're going to do for chillers. Here it goes with the chillers. Pedals and PDUs, um, Derek, my friend, we're going to do them next week. We're where we're, we, we need to be. So don't worry too hard. Start throwing things at me. Thank you.